Well, good morning, everyone. Buenos días a todos. Uh, we're so glad for everyone that has joined us here in church and for those that have joined us online. Gracias por los que están aquí en esta mañana y por los que están en línea con nosotros. Uh, we're going to continue our study that we've been studying entitled, Why We Need the Bible. Vamos a continuar nuestro estudio que se llama, ¿Por qué necesitamos la Biblia? And of, uh, as the study has been, uh, has shown, the Bible is very important for our spiritual lives. Como hemos aprendido, la Biblia es muy importante en nuestra vida. It affects everything that concerns our lives. Afecta toda, todo concernente a nuestra vida. I mean, it concerns our family lives. Nuestra familia. It concerns how we live in society. Como vivemos en la sociedad. And today, we're going to be looking at the Bible and the marketplace. Hoy vamos a estudiar la Biblia y el ámbito de los negocios. And as it says in Spanish, we're dealing with living um, according to the Bible, even in our business affairs. Y como dice en el título, uh, Estamos viviendo y necesitamos la Biblia para entender también el ámbito, acerca del ámbito de los negocios. Our Christian lives, the way that we are as people, affects every part of our lives. Uh, nuestra vida cristiana afecta toda parte de nuestra vida. It affects our home life. La vida en nuestra casa. As well as how we live in the secular world. Y también cómo vivimos afuera de la casa. And so the Bible affects our whole life. Afecta toda nuestra vida. Not just Sunday mornings, amen? No solamente el domingo en la mañana. And so, again, the Bible and the marketplace. La Biblia y el ámbito de los negocios. Our central truth this morning. Nuestra ver verdad central es. Is business performed within biblical boundaries invites God's blessings. Los negocios realiz real realizados dentro de los límites bíblicos invitan las bendiciones de Dios. Now that goes without saying. Y esto sabemos bien. If we live our whole lives within biblical boundaries. Si vivimos nuestras vidas acerca de los límites que hallamos en la Biblia. That in it itself uh, invites God's blessings into our lives. Esto invita a Dios en nuestra vida. And so all the more with our business practices. Cuanto más en nuestros negocios. Our key verse this morning is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. Nuestro versículo clave se halla en 2 de Corintios 9, verso 8. Does anybody want to read that verse? God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. That's an awesome verse, isn't it? Es un, este es un verso bello. It says he's able to bless you abundantly. Dice que Dios nos puede um, hacer que abunde en vosotros toda gracia. And as the verse brings out, he blesses us in abundance. En abundancia. At all times. Siempre. And it says having all that we need. Teniendo siempre en todas las cosas todo lo suficiente. Why does he give us all that we need? ¿Por qué nos da todo lo que necesitamos? It says so that you will abound in every good work. Para toda buena obra. It's not just to be selfish and to keep it all to ourselves. No solamente para nosotros mismos. No, it's ultimately to be a blessing. Sino también para ser bendición a todos. You'll never be able to outgive God. Nunca vamos a poder dar más a Dios que Él nos ha dado. And so, a wise person has insight and discernment into the world around them. Alguien que tiene sabiduría entiende el mundo alrededor de él o ella. And that wise person also embodies honesty and trustworthiness. Y esa persona también va a enseñar la honestidad y um, que pueden confiar en él. And most of the reason for that is we know that whatever we do, we do it as unto the Lord. Y la razón por eso es porque todo lo que hacemos, lo hacemos hacia Dios. And so as we get into our lesson this morning. En ver nuestra lección 
de esta mañana. Let me ask this question. Quiero preguntar. What does the Bible tell us about why work, doing business, and pursuing a career is a necessary part of our lives? Let me say that again. What does the Bible tell us about why work, doing business, and pursuing a career is a necessary part of our lives? Okay. ¿Qué dice la Biblia acerca de trabajar uh, teniendo nuestro, nuestra manera de vivir? Es importante. It was a long question. <laughs> important for our lives. ¿Por qué es importante para nuestra vida? ¿Qué dice la Biblia acerca de eso? The Bible says we should work. Yes. Then the Apostle Paul even say, if you don't work, you shall not eat, right? El Apostle Pablo dijo que si no trabajamos, no podemos comer. And so the scripture is clear. La escritura está claro. God created man. Dios creó al hombre. With this desire to be busy. Con el deseo de estar um, Trabajando. And you'll notice, and I don't know if you've ever experienced this, I'm sure you have. No sé si han uh, sentido esto o no, pero... But there's something inside of us that needs to stay busy. Pero hay algo en dentro de nosotros que nos hace que queremos estar trabajando y haciendo cosas. After I graduated high school, Después de que gradué, uh, I finally got my first job. Yo um, hallé mi primer trabajo. Uh, I was working roofing with a gentleman from La Jara. Estaba trabajando en los techos. And worked there for about six, seven months. Y trabajé por como seis o siete meses. But then after not being uh, with work for a couple weeks. Y después de no trabajar por como dos semanas. There just came within me just this uneasiness. So there was no rest. Había algo en dentro de mí. No tenía descanso. And there was something inside of me that knew I had to go out there and get a job. Y yo sabía muy bien que necesitaba salir a, a ir al trabajo. There's something inside of us that's fulfilled in staying busy or working or pursuing a career or what have you. Hay algo que hallamos bien cuando salimos a trabajar y escoger ese And so the Bible speaks concerning this. It's important to stay busy. Y la Biblia nos habla acerca de esto. It's a part of our lives. Es parte de nuestra vida. And so God even has a plan for our professional lives, even from the very beginning. Y Dios también tiene plan para nuestra vida profesional. And so thank God that we can work in the church, but thank God for what we can do outside of the church as well. Gracias a Dios que podemos trabajar aquí en la iglesia y también afuera de la iglesia. And so let's look at our first point this morning. Nuestro primer punto es It is biblical purpose of business. Propósito bíblico de los negocios. God has a biblical purpose in all that we do. Dios tiene propósito en todo lo que hacemos. And he ultimately he wants us to be good stewards of what he has given into our care. Y él quiere que guardamos todo lo que él ha puesto en nuestras manos. So this, the sub point is we are stewards of creation. Somos mayordomos o gobernadores de la creación. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 1 and let's read verses 28 through 31. Vamos a leer Génesis 1, versos 28 a 31. Is anybody there who would like to read those verses? God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in numbers. Fill the earth and subdue it. Roll over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over the bird, every living creature that moves on the ground. And God said, I give you everything, every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth, and every tree, every tree that has fruit with the seed in it, they will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth, and all the birds in the sky, and all the creatures that move along the ground, Everything that has the breath of life in it, I keep every green plant for food, and it's, it was so. God saw all the all that He may, had made, and it was very good. And there was everything, and it was 
And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. These verses found in Genesis chapter 1 Estos versos en Genesis 1 are a part of what we call beginnings. Son parte de lo que llamamos principios. The book of Genesis is known as the book of beginnings. El libro de Genesis se conoce como el libro de los principios. And of course in chapter 1, this chapter is really truly about the beginnings. Y este capítulo en verdad es nos habla del principio. God created the universe and the world, he even created humanity in his image. Dios creó al mundo, la humanidad en su imagen. And then in these verses we just read, we see the role that humanity is called to fill. Y en estos versos aprendemos la parte que nosotros como humanos debemos de tener. God gave humanity the authority to rule over the created world. Dios dio a la humanidad la autoridad para gobernar sobre la creación. He said, rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and the living things that move over the earth. That's in verse 28. Verso 28. Um, the second half. Okay, let's see. Y les dijo, fructificar y multiplicados, llenar la tierra y sonriar en los peces del mar, aves de los cielos y en todos los bestias que se mueven sobre la tierra. This is showing that God has given us a responsibility. Nos enseña que tenemos responsabilidad. He's given us work to do. Tenemos trabajo que hacer. He even told them to subdue all the earth. Y debemos de... Um, to rule over the earth. Reinar sobre la tierra. And what this was talking about was our responsibility to uh, bring order to God's creation. Y esto nos ayuda para tener orden sobre la creación. We would be responsible as masters over God's creation. Como mayordomos sobre la creación. Now, it wasn't necessarily for personal gain. No era um, específicamente para personalmente tener um, ganancio. But mm -hmm. ultimately, it was to use the resources of creation to glorify God. Era simplemente para glorificar a Dios. You see, that's God's <coughs> purpose. Esto es el propósito de Dios. God has given us all abilities and um, talents and such. Él nos ha dado habilidades y talentos. And all these things that we can do in business and otherwise. Y lo que podemos hacer en negocios y lo demás. God wants us not just to do it so we can uh, just, just receive for ourselves, but ultimately to be a blessing to others. Es no para ganancia a nosotros mismos, sino también para ser bendición a otros. At the end of those verses, the scripture says, God said everything was good or very good. Y Dios dijo uh, que todo lo que había hecho era bueno. You see, God has called us to be good stewards of what we have. Él quiere que seamos um, buenos mayordomos. Uh, and when we talk about being good stewards, it's not only of the things that we have in regards to wealth or homes or abilities. No solamente estamos uh, hablando de las riquezas o casas o cosas que tenemos. But it even speaks concerning being good stewards and everything, even concerning this temple, our own bodies. También nos habla acerca de nuestros cuerpos. But we must be stewards of creation. De debemos de ser mayordomos de la creación. Secondly, we must seek peace with others. Buscar la paz con los demás. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremías 29. And let's read verses 4 through 7. Vamos a leer versos 4 a 7. I'll read these ones if you don't mind. And it says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, To all who have been carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. He tells them, Build houses and dwell in them, and plant gardens and eat their fruit. Take wives and beget sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands so that they may bear sons and daughters so that you may increase and increase there and not diminish. 
Seek peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive. Pray to the Lord for it, for in its peace you will have peace. These verses are powerful verses. Estos versos son muy poderosos. It's talking about seeking peace with others. Nos habla de buscar paz con los demás. But it's even speaking about more than just that. Y más de esto nos habla. The children of Israel los, uh, hijos de Israel had fallen into idolatry and God's judgment had come their way. Ellos habían caído en la idolatría y Dios uh, iba a castigarlos por eso. And the scripture speaks concerning the rise of Babylon and Babylon ultimately taking the children of Israel captive. Y la escritura nos dice acerca del reino de Babilonia y Judá fue um, exiliada a Babilonia. And so when they were taken captive, they were all taken to the land of Babylon. Y todos los hijos de Israel fueron llevados a Babilonia. And so they were away from their familiar surroundings. They were in another city. Estaban afuera de lo que conocían bien. And it's amazing because the Lord speaks to Jeremiah to speak to the children of Israel. Y Dios le dio palabra a Jeremías para dar a los hijos de Israel. And he tells them, build houses. Y les dice, hagan casas, edifícanlos. He, he says, plant gardens. Plantan um, jardines. He said to, of course, get married, take wives and such. Cásense, tengan hijos. In other words, live your lives in that land. Viven su vida en esta nueva and, tierra. And when you're there, stay busy. Y quédate trabajando. Now, through Jeremiah, he had told them they would stay there for 70 years. Por medio de Jeremías, la palabra vino que iban a quedarse allí por 70 años. And there's a subtle hint here about blooming where you're planted, isn't there? Y esto nos habla de crecer donde estamos plantados. They were not going to go anywhere, so he said, build your houses, plant your gardens. Por eso Dios les dijo, edifican casas y plantan jardines. Did you know it's it's uh, of God to plant a garden? <laughs> Dios uh, <laughs> está alegre cuando tenemos jardines. It's an inside joke with... <laughs> I know. We don't have a green thumb, right? A little joke with Sister Dorothy back there. She likes to plant tomatoes in her little backyard there. And so, mm -hmm. no, it's a good thing to stay busy. And of course, it doesn't mean you have to literally plant gardens today, but just a little joke there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I understand. Sometimes the garden just doesn't want to work, right? Or that plant just doesn't want to grow, man. But anyways, he told them to stay busy. That's the point. Dios les dijo, les, les dijo que tenían que trabajar y quedarse trabajando. But then he told them to seek peace, seek the peace of the city. Y también les dijo que necesitaban buscar la paz con los demás. And it's the same today. Y es el mismo mensaje para nosotros hoy. You see, where we are is where we live. Donde estamos es donde vivemos. We are blessed to live in the United States of America. Estamos bendecidos de poder vivir en los Estados Unidos. And we need to pray for the peace of the United States of America. Y tenemos que orar por paz en nuestra nación. He says, seek peace or seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive and pray to the Lord for it. For in its peace, you will have peace. Procurar la paz de la ciudad al cual os hice transportar y rogar por ella a Jehová porque en su paz traes vosotros paz. You see, as our country is in peace, then it turns out to be a blessing to us. Si nuestra nación se encuentra en paz, se va a ser bendición también a nosotros. How many of you know our country needs peace? Y ¿Cuántos saben que nuestra nación necesita buscar paz? There's a lot going on in the country right now. Hay muchas cosas pasando en nuestra nación. I'm not going to get into the conspiracy of it all. No voy a hablar acerca de uh, lo que piensan de todo. But we need to be in prayer for our president, for our country, 
and for the agenda that wants to destroy our country. Pero tenemos que guardarnos en oración para nuestra nación y en contra de la agenda que quiere destruir nuestra nación. Uh, the way other nations have fallen to communism or socialism are what is happening now in the United States of America. En la manera que muchas otras naciones han caído en el comunismo o um, what was the other word? Communism or and socialism. Um, and so, mm -hmm, so it's important to be in prayer for the upcoming elections and for the one that stands for truth and righteousness. Por eso tenemos que estar en oración porque necesitamos que la verdad permanece. One of the gentlemen that's running for president has said clearly. Uno de los, que, uno de los candidatos ha, ha dicho claramente. That if he's elected to be president, he will do everything in his power to help um, uh, the abortion clinics to flourish. Él ha declarado que si él está, uh, que... Si lo votan a él, él va a ayudar que la agenda para las abort abortaciones uh, permanece y sigue adelante. We need to pray for the peace of our country. Y por eso necesitamos orar mucho. We need to read between the lines of what we hear in the media. Y discernir lo que estamos oyendo. We need to be discerning and we need to do our own research. Y buscar y entender en verdad lo que está pasando. Because most of the media is bending one way. A veces mucho de lo que oímos en las nuevas están en contra de la verdad. Amen. Amen. We're going to say something, Brother Jaime. For, for people just to see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is a lot of people that yeah. are blinded. They just say, oh, our president, we don't like who he is as a person. So what? Mm. You know what I mean? So what? I mean, that's who he is. You, you, you know, that's who he is as a person. But look at his record. Look at what he has done for the country. Look at what he has done for the church. Amen. Amen. For conservatism. Mm -hmm. What he has done for the country that's not against the country. That has helped to bring prosperity into the country. And has helped to bring us to a different level. So we got to... Have a look at an honest mm -hmm. look at who the president, our current president is, and who the upcoming uh, Democratic candidate is as well. Yeah, it's important to ver claramente y no estar ciegos de lo que en verdad está pasando y orar por nuestro presidente y todos los líderes. But it's true. We need to pray that the eyes of many would be opened to the facts. Mm -hmm. Amen. Que Dios abre nuestros ojos a entender lo que está pasando. Now let's move to our second point. El segundo punto es. It is biblical responsibilities in business. Responsabilidades bíblicas en los negocios. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 11. Vamos a leer en Proverbios 11. And let's see good and evil contrasted. El buen y el mal contrasted. Look at verses 23 through 31. Vamos a leer versos 23 a 31. And I'm going to read these uh, really quick. Mm -hmm. And it says, The desires of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. There is one who scatters, yet increases. And there is one who withholds more than is right, and it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will be watered also himself. The people will curse him who withholds grain, but blessing will be upon the head of him who sells it. He who diligently seeks good procures favor, but he who seeks mischief, will, uh, it will come to him. He who trusts in riches will fail or fall, but the righteous will flourish as a branch. He who troubles his own house will inherit the wind, and the fool will be servant to the wise of heart. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. If, if the righteous will be recompensed in the earth, how much more the wicked and the sinner. These verses bring a contrast between good and evil. Estos versos nos enseñan contrastados uh, del bien y el mal. The book of Proverbs is an excellent book to have uh, in our devotional life. 
Proverbios es un libro excelente tener en nuestra devoción con Dios. Because it imparts biblical wisdom to the reader. Nos puede dar mucha sabiduría en leerlo. And more importantly, to the one that will listen. Más importante a el que escucha estas palabras. But Proverbs brings out many contrasts such as good and evil. Y hayamos muchos contrastados en proverbios. Uh, like good versus evil. El bien y el mal. Wise versus the foolish. La sabiduría en contrasto al insensato. Responsibility versus laziness. Um, responsabilidad en contrastado con ser flojo. And so these proverbs help us to see God's expectation of his people. Y esto nos ayuda a entender de lo que Dios quiere de nosotros. And even what he desires of us and how we run our business affairs. Y también nuestras responsabilidades acerca de los negocios. Now what's interesting is that these verses bring out some of the law of sowing and reaping. Estos versos nos enseñan la ley de som, um, as, sowing and reaping. Uh -huh, uh, cosechar y uh, de poner la semilla y cosechar. Sembrar y cosechar. Thank you. And it's very clear, this law. It's a law. Es una ley. It's just like the law of gravity that does not change. Como la ley de gravedad. No, nunca cambia. This law is the law of sowing. What you sow, you will reap. Y esta ley también es verdad. Lo que cosechamos. And it brings out how the righteous, des yes. the righteous desires lead to blessing. Y los justos, um, cuando escogemos ser justos, vamos a tener bendición. Evil desires lead to judgment. Y los males, uh, Cosas van a traer que vamos a ser juzgados. Listen to this. Generosity brings prosperity. En ser uh, alguien que quiere dar, but va a traer. But selfishness brings poverty. Va a traer prosperidad, pero al contrario, en querer muchas cosas, vamos a no poder tener mucho. Look at verse 24. Miren a verso 24. It says, There is one who scatters, yet increases. Hay quienes reparten y les, y les es añadido más. This is a powerful verse. Es verso poderoso. They're taking what they have and they're scattering it. They're giving it. Tienen, uh, toman lo que tienen y dan a otros. And yet, in their throwing it out, they're still increasing. Y como quiera, es añadido más a ellos. And then it brings the contrast. There is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. Y al contrario dice, y hay quienes retienen más de lo justo y acaban en la miseria. And this again speaks concerning our finances. Esto nos habla de nuestro uh, dinero. But it also applies to our gifts and talents and abilities that we can give out. Y de todo, nuestros habilidades, talentos y todo lo que podemos hacer para Dios. There are some that are so tight. Hay muchos que nunca quieren dar. I mean, man, they, they don't get a penny back in change. They're up in arms over it. Um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not talking about you, what you guys mentioned. No, I'm serious. You know, it's like, you know, just a little bit, it's like a huge deal, you know? Se les hace que un poco es tanto. But the scripture says there's one who withholds more than is right. Como dice, hay quienes retienen más de lo justo y acaben en la miseria. Now we need to understand this properly. Pero queremos entender esto bien. There is nothing wrong with saving. No hay nada mal en guardar y There, el dinero. There's nothing wrong with having, having a, an emergency account. Y tener uh, dinero para emergencia. It's encouraged that every household have at least three to six months worth of living in your in a bank account should you lose your job or this unexpected thing hits your life. Uh, nos han dicho que es importante tener um, para tres a seis meses en caso de emergencia. 
This is being wise. Y esto es tener sabiduría. It's planning for for that loss. De tener un plan en caso de emergencia. When you have that emergency fund and your engine gives out on your car, cuando algo quebra, se quebra nuestro carro, then you have the money in the bank to get a brand new engine. Es bien ya tener el dinero para componerlo. And you don't have to worry about going into debt to get it fixed. Y no tenemos que tener uh, preocupación. That's being wise. Es bueno tener esta sabiduría. But it also says there is one who withholds more than it is right. Pero nos dice que hay quienes retienen más de lo justo. And that's speaking about being so selfish, so tight, if you will, that we don't give. Y esto no es bueno porque no queremos dar lo que debemos. And sadly, it ultimately leads to poverty. Y tristemente la Biblia dice que nos hallamos en miseria. It's the law of sowing and reaping. Es la ley de sembrar y cosechar. Thank It's you. amazing. I've seen this in action when a person just gives is a giver. Hemos visto cuando una persona da y da and they can give and they give y siguen dando and yet they're always receiving y siempre Dios le está bendiciendo en abundancia. A constant inflow and a constant outflow. Sigue viniendo y ellos siguen dando. And, and, and I've been amazed at watching that to those that are true givers. Es una cosa muy bella ver esto. But these verses are showing us how to be in regards to being responsible with uh, our business affairs. Y estos versos nos ayudan a entender nuestras responsabilidades bíblicas en los negocios. You see, people will usually find what they seek after. La gente va a hallar lo que busca. I mean, if it's good or if it's evil. Sea bueno o sea malo. If we go after it, we'll find it. Si buscamos, hallamos. Sin ultimately brings trouble and ruin. Y el pecado trae uh, dolor y ruina. And you'll notice it doesn't only affect the one that goes after it. Y no solamente va a afectar una persona. It also harms those that are closest to them. Afecta a los que están alrededor de esa persona. And it's the same with those that are righteous. Y es la verdad también por los justos. As you pursue righteousness, it brings fruit into Mien your life. Mientras que buscamos en ser justos, va a traer uh, fruta a nuestra vida. And it also brings fruit so that it will affect those that are close to you in your lives as well. Y también va a ser de bendición a los que están alrededor de nosotros. The righteous walk a road that leads to reward. Uh, what verse are you in? Or oh, it's, it's, just, uh, yeah. okay. El justo anda en el camino que trae recompensa. Whereas the ungodly walk on a road that leads to judgment. Pero el injusto habla, um, anda en el camino que trae um, el juicio. Now, really quick before we finish this point. Rápidamente quiero decir. Sometimes there are people that are tempted to separate their business lives from their spiritual lives. Hay veces que estamos tentan, tentados a separar nuestra vida de negocios y que sea separado de nuestra vida espiritual. They, they do all the right things with their church family, yet they straddle the line between good and evil in their work. La persona puede hacer todo lo que es bueno espiritualmente con su iglesia, pero en los negocios no es así. You know, sometimes they're seeking, for, seeking personal profit while compromising truth or treating others Badly. A veces quieren tener ganancia personalmente y tienen compromiso y no guarden la honestidad. Is this right or is that wrong? Y yo quiero preguntar, ¿está esto bien o mal? It's definitely wrong, right? God wants us to be true and honest and live as a Christian in this, our spiritual lives, in church, but as well as in our business practices. Es mal porque Dios quiere que sigam, sigamos bien en nuestra vida espiritual, también en nuestros negocios, que seamos honestos. And so we must avoid that temptation to 
think it's okay to separate our spiritual lives from our business lives. Tenemos que alejarnos de esta tentación de separar nuestra vida espiritual de nuestra vida de negocios. God has also uh, equipped us for generosity. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8. Dios nos ha equipado para la, la generosidad. Miren conmigo 2 de Corintios 9, 8. Anybody want to read 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8? It's a beautiful verse. Este es un verso bonito. It's bringing out how that God is able to make all grace abound towards us. Why? Dios puede hacer que la gracia abunde, pero ¿por qué? It says so that we would have enough in everything so that we may abound to every good work. Dice para que siempre en todas las cosas uh, todo lo, tenemos todo lo suficiente y para toda buena obra. God wants us to be generous. Dios quiere que seamos personas de generosidad. He gives it to us and he blesses us in this way so that we could be a blessing to others. Dios nos bendice para que nosotros podamos ser de bendición a otros. And you see all of this comes through because of our walk with God. Y esto viene de nuestro caminar con Dios. You see, when we see others in need, we should seek the Lord to see what we could do to be a blessing to that individual or individuals. Cuando vemos que otros tienen necesidad, debemos de orar y pedirle a Dios cómo podemos ser de bendición a ellos. This doesn't always mean giving away money. Esto no solamente habla de dar dinero. Sometimes it could be a meal we give. Puede hablar de dar comida. Sometimes it's giving someone of our abilities and talents. O de otras habilidades o talentos que tenemos para ayudarles. It's just seeing what the need may be and praying, Lord, how can I meet that need? Es de ver que alguien tiene necesidad y orar. Dios, ¿cómo puedo ayudarles? But it also does speak concerning our, our finances. Y también uh, nos habla de el dinero. God blesses our finances and he wants us to be generous. Dios quiere que uh, seamos, uh, tenemos generosidad a otros con el dinero también. I like the way this statement says it here. Success for the believer ought to translate into compassion for those who... Say it again. Success for the believer ought to translate into compassion for those in need. El éxito del creyente debe de enseñarse en tener compasión con otros, a otros. God wants us to be that way, right? I just want to share something that we, that we uh, experienced, I think, uh, yesterday or the day before. Yeah. So there's a lady in town that we know. James, in, would you want to give the microphone? Mm -hmm. And that uh, steps. Yeah. And um, as we were passing by the gas station, we saw her sitting down right there in the little corner. Yeah. Mm. And we noticed this other gentleman that was there, never seen him in town. I think he was just passing through. Yeah. So you, you can uh, tell that he was also homeless. Oh, yeah. Mm. But he was giving him little, he was giving her the little money mm. that he had to help this lady. Oh, I see. Yeah. And so, I mean, we kind of. Yeah. 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 That's interesting, isn't it? I mean, so that. So there's the homeless man that you saw, and then another lady that was seemingly in need, and yet he, with his, what, the little that he had, he tried to help her, and yet, wow, that's that's an interesting uh, scene. Yeah. Never that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's interesting. That's true. Mm -hmm. God wants us to be a blessing, right? Dios quiere que seamos de bendición. And sometimes it can be difficult. A veces es difícil. You know, it's like, like Brother Jaime just mentioned with, you know, the other person that was there in need. 
como él mencionó, viendo a alguien que tiene necesidad. And sometimes you do know where, say, the money you would give them would go. Y a veces es difícil porque quizás sabes dónde va a ir tu dinero si lo das a you esa know, persona. Be it, it would be someone with, you know, a drug lifestyle or such. Porque tienen un hábito mal uh, de drogas o lo que sea. So of course you'd be hesitant to give them money because you don't want to help their addiction. Y no queremos ayudar esa adicción que tienen en su vida. But God can give us wisdom on to how to reach out or meet the need of individuals even if it's not monetarily. Pero Dios nos puede dar la sabiduría para poder entender cómo podemos ayudarles. God wants us to be generous. Dios quiere que seamos uh, una gente de generosidad. And we need to be careful that we don't make excuses for for our lack of generosity. Y no queremos uh, ser gente que tenemos excusa uh, que no vamos a dar por esta razón u otra. But we need to learn to be generous as God helps us. Pero aprender como en cuanto Dios nos ayuda a tener generosidad. Amen. Amen. Now, our third point this morning. Nuestro punto número tres es. Is biblical ethics in business. Ética bíblica en los negocios. Let's turn to the book of Proverbs again. Vamos a leer otra vez en Proverbios 11. And we're going to start with Proverbs 11, then we're going to skip to Proverbs 21, and then Proverbs 22. Y luego vamos a leer Proverbios 21, y luego 22. The scripture says in Proverbs 11, verse 1, A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. And then chapter 21, verses 25 through 26, says... Proverbios 21, 25 a 26 dice, The desire of the slothful kills him, but his hands refuse to labor. He cuffets greedily all the day long, but the righteous gives and does not spare. And then lastly, 22, verse 16. And it says, He who oppresses the poor to increase his riches, and he who gives to the rich will surely come to want. Mm -hmm. This is talking about being honest and compassionate. Esto nos habla de ser honesto y compasivo. And one of the greatest places where our ethics shine the brightest is in the marketplace. Y una de las áreas en cuanto esto va a enseñarse es en nuestros negocios. Now, the first verse that we saw, Proverbs 11, verse 1, talks about a false weight. La primera parte que leímos nos habla acerca de una falsa... Um, Or balance, false balance. Peso. Mm -hmm. And what it's talking about is being honest in all of our dealings in regards to our business practices. Y nos habla de ser honesto en todos nuestros negocios. You see, back in, in, in those ancient times... En los, en los tiempos antiguos... It was difficult to be precise in making the weights used in business. Era difícil tener el exacto peso en los negocios. And so it was real easy to manipulate things to be dishonest. Y a veces era fácil ser, uh, no ser honesto en los negocios. So as to get more money in return or, or such things like that. Para ganarse más dinero a sí mismo. Like to make something look heavier than it really was or lighter than it really was. Podían hacer que algo se aparecía ser más de peso, pero no era. And so this is something that the Lord does not like. Y esto no es cosa que Dios quiere. So es malo. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord. Es una abominación a Dios. And so we need to be honest in all that we do. Tenemos que ser honesto en todo lo que hacemos. Even the very little things that we might think no one would notice, God sees it. Aún en las cosas chiquitas que parece que nadie los va a ver como quiera. Then it brings out the <coughs> slothful person. Y también nos habla acerca de el, el, la persona que no quiere trabajar. In Proverbs 21, verse 25 and 26. Proverbios 21. 
it brings out how, look at what it says there in verse 25. It says, the desire of the slothful kills him. Dice, el deseo del perezoso lo mata. What's it saying? ¿Qué está diciendo? A slothful verso? person is someone that's not willing to work. They're just being lazy or very slow, right? Slothful. Este describe una persona que simplemente no quiere trabajar. And it says their desire kills him. His own desire kills him. Pero dice que el deseo de esta persona lo mata. And the reason for that is because this slothful person has so many desires that they want, so many wants, so many desires inside of them. Y la razón es que esta persona tiene tantos deseos dentro de él. They're just constantly dreaming about what they could have or what they want. Constantemente están soñando y pensando de lo que quieren. And yet it kills them because they refuse to lift up their hands and work. Pero no quieren trabajar y por eso quiere decir la escritura que lo mata. You know, it's it's like a, a Christian sometimes. Es como ser un cristiano. You know, that sometimes we'll say, you know, I'm just praying and I'm praying and I'm praying. Quizás podemos decir, estoy orando y orando. For this thing, for this thing that they desire. Por este deseo. But they don't, they're not putting their part in to get there. Pero no ponemos nuestro parte para recibirlo. They're not getting a job. They're not working. They're not doing this. Quizás no estamos um, poniendo fuerza para obtener un trabajo o lo que sea. Sometimes we just have to start at the lowest rung. A veces tenemos que empezar quizás en lo más pequeño. Small jobs. Que sea un trabajo pequeño. A part-time job. Por un tiempo. Something, and then all of a sudden you end up at the right place at the right time in the presence of the right person. Y después hallamos que nos encontramos al correcto lugar, correcto tiempo, con la correcta persona. I remember when I was a very young Christian. Yo recuerdo que era cuando era cristiano uh, de principio. I talked to this person and I said, what's the Lord's will for my life? Y le pregunté a alguien, ¿qué es la voluntad de Dios para mi vida? And they told me just this little tidbit of wisdom. Y me dijeron estas palabras. They said it's easier to steer a car while it's moving. Es más fácil uh, manejar un carro que se está moviendo. Because so, yeah, I've ever tried to turn the steering wheel of a car that's not moving. Porque si tratamos de, uh, I'm not sure how I say it. I mean, even if the engine is turned off, oh, forget it. Voltear un carro si no está aprendido aprendido thank you but it's way easier to steer a car while it's moving pero es más fácil manejar un carro si se está moviendo mm -hmm. but this is one of the realities this slothful person is dreaming constantly but their hands refuse to work es una de, la, de las realidades it says in verse 26 he covets greedily all the day long dice en verso 26 él Codicioso, codice todo el día. But then it says concerning the righteous, the righteous gives and does not spare. Pero el justo da sin retener su mano. Beautiful verses. Be un verso bonito. Uh, ch chapter 22, verse 16. Capítulo 22, verso uh, 16. It says, he who oppresses the poor to increase his riches... Go ahead, I'm still uh, and he who gives to the rich will surely come to want. El que por aumentar sus ganancias oprime al pobre o da al rico ciertamente se empobrecerá. And sadly, there's a lot of people in the world like this. Tristemente, hay muchas personas en el mundo como este. That take advantage of the poor. Que toman ventaja del pobre. Some of it's in our political system, too. Quizás políticamente también. We need to understand that we don't take advantage of those that are in need. No, de, Dios no quiere que tomemos uh, ventaje o prime al pobre. But it also says those that give to the rich will surely come to want. Y al contrario, dice, el que da al rico, no, no, también dice, el que da al rico ciertamente se empobrecerá. That doesn't mean literally just give something to someone that's rich. Esto no quiere decir que damos a alguien que está rico. 
but it's actually trying to gain their favor by flattery or doing favors to try to get their money. Nos habla acerca de tener un propósito para ganar uh, um, favor o reconocimiento de ese rico. And so ultimately that person will come to want as well. Y últimamente, por eso dice la Biblia, ciertamente se empobrecerá. And so lastly, let's look at this point in James chapter 5. En Santiago 5, vamos a leer 1 a 4. We must be selfless, not self-indulgent. Debemos de ser desinteresado, no autoindulgente. It says in James <coughs> chapter 5, verses 1 through 4, Come now, you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded, and their corrosion will be a witness against you, and will eat your flesh like fire. You have stored up treasures for the last days. Indeed, the wages that you keep back by fraud from the laborers who have harvested your fields are crying, and the cries of those who have harvested have, ever, have entered into the ears of the Lord of hosts. These are some strong words that James is bringing out here. Estas son palabras muy fuertes aquí. But what he's showing to the rich is that worldly treasure eventually rots away. Pero quiere enseñar aquí que um, las riquezas no van a seguir por siempre. It really doesn't matter how shiny it is, it will eventually tarnish. It won't be no, as, as bright later on. No importa cuánto brille por un tiempo porque no va a quedar así nada. You see, instead of being devoted to storing earthly treasures, en vez de tener tanto devoción a las cosas materiales, especially in these last days, um, Aún en estos días que estamos viviendo, we as God's people ought to be devoted to laying up treasures in heaven. Como el pueblo de Dios debemos de uh, tener un deseo de tener esos tesoros del cielo. Jesus said, "Those treasures that we store in heaven do not rust." Porque esos tesoros nunca van a uh, terminar. But they don't rot. They don't tarnish. No se van a destruir. And so it's uh, very important for us to focus on storing treasures in heaven. Amen. Y es importante enfocarnos en tener tesoros en el cielo. You know, when you give to those in need, you're storing treasures in heaven. Cuando damos a el que tiene necesidad, vamos a tener tesoros en el cielo. You know, as we listen to the, or as the cries of the exploited are being sounded out, it does come into the ears of God. Dios escucha cuando el que está en necesidad está llorando. You see, we shouldn't be focused on accumulating wealth for our own indulgences. No debemos de tener solamente el, el deseo, el enfoco en nuestras ganancias, nuestras riquezas. But rather it should be so that we can reach out and meet the needs of those around us. Sino también en que... En, ¿Cómo podemos dar para ayudar los que tienen necesidad? Amen. I mean, almost as the beginning of the lesson or the study, I've been thinking about this question. Uh -huh. Whether I should ask it or not, or how to ask it, because I don't want to sound like I'm against it, or uh -huh. uh, that I'm a, uh, I don't know what's the word that I am. Um, <laughs> Yes. And we are also demanding to help those people. Yeah. But it seems like the government is trying to just go against what the Bible says by example is the welfare. Yeah. I know and we know that there's people that are work can do those things that anybody does, but they're depending on, on the government government assistance. Yeah. But yeah, we see them with other 
nice vehicles and other stuff, mm -hmm. which that's beyond the point. But I think that the government is in the agenda too, to, because it's going against what the Bible says. It, as long as we keep these people under control and we give them what they need and we don't have to do this, yes. we have them right here. What is your uh, comment on that? What, what do you think? You know, when you, when you talk about the government, what we need to distinguish when we talk about the government is we've got to understand that we've got both arms of government, both the Republican side and the Democratic side. And so when we talk about an issue like, you know, the government and assistance uh, and how the government wants to keep these people in control by them being dependent on the government, You've got to remember that that really is on the agenda of one side as opposed to the other. And so uh, it's more the Democratic Party, and I'll just say it because to bring clarity, they, they like to be, bring big government and keep the people dependent on it uh, so as to keep these people in control. That's why they, they work that way. That's the Democratic side of things. President Trump, on the other hand, I'll just name him, he's, he's been one that has helped to bring more jobs, uh, you know, in just these past three years, had it not been for this virus, uh, the job market was, I mean, and it's even increased just recently again. Uh, it's no, no surprise that it's a lot of a democratic situation that wants to keep the, government, or the country closed as opposed to opening it, but that's a whole side note. President Trump, encourage people to get out of welfare and get a job. You see, there is a greater fulfillment in we as human beings when we are working hard and making that money through the work of our own hands than just sitting back and receiving this free money from anybody. You see, and, and it just makes you feel like, oh, you can't do it or I don't need to do it. And it just brings a kind of a slothful spirit, to be honest with you, when God has given us the ability. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. There are people that sincerely need the help of the government. I mean, many, uh, many elderly people, many that are uh, really, truly uh, disabled. You know, don't, don't get me wrong. We, we want to help those individuals. But if a person can, and they have the ability, they should get a job. They should continue their education. And so, no, I agree. I don't think it's a good thing to have huge government. That's where the socialistic, communistic element is trying to enter in with these different uh, thoughts. And sadly, a lot of this mentality has come through the university where it's very socialist in its, in its mindset. And I see it as a cycle because it's been happening for a long time. Yeah. And so those kids of the parents that started with that, I said, well, it's my parents. Okay, and I don't have to do this either. So mm -hmm. they go through the same system, and then their kids go through the same system. Yeah. And it's just a cycle that is happening. And so yeah. It is putting, like you said, it's a mentality. Oh, it's just I, have, I don't have to do anything because I know that it's coming. Yeah, and it's it's really sad, and a lot of it comes, especially a lot of our young people that are misinformed. You know, there are some people. You know, recently we were watching. I forget where we saw it. I don't know if it was YouTube or somewhere else. But there was an individual saying, no, you, we got to get rid of that statue. We've got to get rid of the statue and this person. So they asked that individual, do you know who that person is? They said, oh, I don't know who it is. We just need to get rid of the statue. You know, and that's how it is. They're just blinded by what's going on and think, oh, we've got to do this because this is what's going on when we're misinformed. We need to do our own research. We've got to do our own studies as far as um, government in regards to candidates for president and all these things, not just believe CNN. Not even just believe Fox News. And I think the capitalist yeah. society is coming to the same point. It's too yeah. Have control, right? Total control. Dave, Dave Ramsey just recently made a huge statement in regards to that. Because once you go to a cashless society, they know every single thing about every interaction that you do with every dime and cent. So, you know, digital dime and cent. And so you're not free to go and work at somebody's yards and then somebody give you a $20 bill for cutting their yard. How are you going to pay them anymore? The government needs to know, you know? And so remember when you think government, don't think President Trump. This is not what we're talking about. We're think, when we talk about government, we're talking about the whole. And the agenda today is to overcome the current administration, get rid of it, and control. And they, there's an agenda to destroy, and we've got to be prayerful, like we said earlier. Amen.
And so for those that are listening and don't understand the English, hopefully someone can translate for them online. Amen. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for our lesson today. Help us to be honest. Help us to be a people that shine brightly in this day that we're living in, that, Lord, we would never uh, do anything contrary to how we should be. Lord, when we make our mistakes, Lord, and we are learning, Lord, Lord, we do pray that you would help us. I pray for any that are struggling, for any, Lord, that are in need of direction, that you would faithfully, Lord God, show them the way. And I pray that you would bless the remainder of our service. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like for you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Hebrews. Vayan conmigo al libro de Hebreos. And I would like you to turn to Hebrews chapter 7. Vamos a ir a capítulo 7. I want to read Hebrews chapter 7. Vamos a leer Hebreos 7. And I want to read verses 18 through 28. Versos 18 a 28. And it's from these verses that we will get our message. Y vamos a hablar de estos versos. It says in verse 18, and I'm going to read this in English. It says, For there is then an annulling of the previous commandment due to its weakness and uselessness. For the law made nothing perfect, but now a better hope is introduced by which we draw near to God. And he was not made a priest without an oath. Other priests were made without an oath, but this one with an oath by the one who said to him, The Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Through this oath, Jesus became a guarantor of a better covenant. And the former priests were numerous because they were hindered from serving because of death. But he, because he lives forever, has an everlasting priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, because he at all times lives to make intercession for them. For such an high priest was fitting for us, for he is holy, innocent, undefiled, separate from sinners, and is higher than the heavens. Unlike those high priests, he does not need to offer daily sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the people's, for he did this once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men who are weak as, as high priests, but the word of the oath, which came after the law, appoints a son who is made perfect forever. Let's read verse um, 25 one more time, and it says this. Therefore, he is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, because he at all times lives to make intercession for them. You can read verse 25 in Spanish. Verso 25 dice, Por lo cual puede también salvar completamente a los que por medio de él se acercan a Dios, viviendo siempre para interceder por ellos. And I want to speak a short message this morning entitled, Saved to the Utmost. Quiero compartir el mensaje con el título Salvado al Máximo. Again, saved to the utmost. Salvado al máximo. Let's pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I ask for the anointing upon your word this morning. I pray, Lord, that your word would speak into every one of our lives that are gathered here in the building or online. I pray, Lord, that your word would come forth with clarity, yet with simplicity. And I pray most of all that, Lord, it would be uh, beneficial for us spiritually today. Bless the preaching of your word we ask in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Amen. These verses that I read just a bit ago, Esos versos que leí, in some ways could be a little difficult to understand. En una manera pueden ser difíciles a entender. Uh, we don't weren't raised in Jewish culture or in Judaism. Nosotros no cre crecimos en uh, el jud um, en ser judíos. And so because we don't know or have a background um, in Jewish culture, sometimes these things can be hard to understand. Y quizás no sabemos la cultura de los judíos y por eso es difícil un poco entender. But these verses are talking about the differentiation between what happened under the law and what now takes place under the new covenant. Pero estos versos nos enseñan la diferencia de lo que pasó abajo del antiguo pacto y el nuevo pacto. In the Old Testament, there was a priesthood. 
En el Antiguo Testamento habían sacerdotes. And those priests began with Aaron and his sons. Y los sacerdotes empezaron con Aarón y sus hijos. That was Aaron was Moses' brother. Aarón era el hermano de Moisés. And so from the time of Moses all the way up until the time of Christ, there was a priesthood. Desde el tiempo de Moisés hasta Jesús, uh, siguieron siendo sacerdotes. And the function of the priesthood was to offer sacrifice and to offer intercession for the people. Y el propósito de tener un sacerdote es que ellos podían dar el sacrificio uh, por la gente. The sacrificial system was instrumental in keeping the people in covenant relationship with God. Y este sistema de dar sacrificios ayudaba que la gente podían mantener su relación con Dios. But the Hebrew writer brings a distinction from the old into the new. Pero el que escribió el libro de Hebreos uh, nos enseña la diferencia del antiguo y el nuevo. Under the new covenant, there's only one high priest. Abajo del nuevo pacto, solamente hay un sacerdote. And his name is Jesus. Quien se llama Jesucristo. In the Old Testament, the high priesthood uh, came, uh, every high priest lived and died, and then a new one took his place. En el Antiguo Testamento, uh, bajo de la ley, el sacerdote servía, se moría, y otro se levantaba, el sacerdote. Was, and this was because of sin. Y esto era que tenían pecado y tenían que tener este sistema. Because there was sin in the world, there would be death. Porque había pecado en el mundo, iba a haber uh, El morir. And so because they would die, they would have to uh, install a new high priest, you know, every so often. Y después que un sacerdote se moría, tenían que levantarse otro nuevo sacerdote. But Jesus is brought out here as the great high priest. Pero aquí leemos que Jesucristo es el sumo sacerdote. And the difference is Jesus does not die. Y la diferencia es que Jesucristo nunca puede mo morir. He conquered death. Él venció la muerte. And he lives and is alive and will ever be alive. Él vive y vivirá por siempre. And so because he's alive, he has an everlasting priesthood. Y porque él está vivo, siempre va a seguir siendo el sumo sacerdote. Verse 24 said, but he, because he lives forever, has an everlasting priesthood. Verso 24 dice, mas este, por cuanto permanece siempre, teniendo un sacerdote intransferible. Therefore, the scripture says, por lo cual, because he lives forever, but it, oh, um, 24, 25, no, just because he lives okay. forever. Porque él vive siempre. Therefore, he's able to save to the uttermost. Puede salvar completamente. He's able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. A los que por medio de él se acercan a Dios. If we approach God through Jesus Christ. Si nosotros nos acercamos a Dios por medio de Jesucristo. The scripture says that he's able to save us to the uttermost. La Biblia aquí dice que él nos puede salvar completamente. And the reason why is because he ever lives or he lives at all times to make intercession for us. Y la razón es porque viviendo Él siempre viviendo para interceder por nosotros. This is beautiful. Esto es muy bello. Jesus would become the high priest of an eternal covenant. Jesús se, um, se, uh, iba a ser el sacerdote uh, de un pacto eternal. And so I want to look at a couple words here. Quiero mirar algunas palabras aquí. In verse 22. En verso 22. It talks about an oath that was spoken concerning Jesus becoming a high priest. Nos habla, dice, tanto más ha llegado a ser Jesús fiador de un mejor pacto. It says in verse 21, The Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. 
Tú eres sacerdote para siempre según el orden del Melchizedek. This is an oath from God. Esto es una promesa de Dios. And verse 22 says through that oath. Y verso 22 dice por medio de este pacto. Jesus became the guarantor of a better covenant. Jesús se hizo fiador de un mejor pacto. That word guarantor. La palabra fiador. It means a person or an organization that gives or acts as a guarantee. Uh, es nombre de una persona o organización que um, da como garantía. What this is saying is that Jesus is the guarantee of this new covenant. Y esto nos dice que Jesús nos es un garantía del nuevo pacto. Jesus brought us into the new covenant. Él nos trajo Tra, uh, nos lleva al nuevo pacto. And because of this, we have him as our guarantee. Y él es nuestro fiador. If we are in Christ, si nos hallamos en Cristo, we are a part of this new covenant. Somos parte de este nuevo pacto, which is called a better covenant. ¿Cuál se llama el mejor pacto? That means it's better than the old covenant. Mejor del antiguo pacto. For it's under the new covenant that we're able to be saved to the uttermost. Porque abajo del nuevo pacto podemos ser salvados completamente. I like the way it says it in Spanish, don't you? Me gusta como dice en español. Completamente. Completamente. We are saved completely. Completamente. Amen to the uttermost. Al máximo. That word uttermost can also be called utmost. La palabra máximo o completamente también se puede llamar oh, I think I said it wrong. Máximo. In the Spanish it kind of stays the same. Okay. But utmost is a powerful word. Es una palabra poderosa. It means when it says that he saved us to the utmost. Um, quiere decir that it's that we are saved to the most extreme or to the greatest Uh, to the extent or to the greatest extent. Que hemos sido salvados al más extremo o a más extrema extensión o cantidad. To do one's utmost. En hacer um, algo al máximo. It means that you do the most that one is able. Es, quiere decir que has, has sido lo máximo que es uh, Capaz, o que puedes. That means that God has done everything that he can do to save you and me. Y Dios ha hecho el máximo para salvarnos. He has saved us to the utmost. Él nos ha salvado al máximo. Your salvation is a complete salvation. Es completa nuestra salvación. It's not something that has only been partly done. It's something that has been completely done. No es algo que uh, es parte de algo completo. No, es completamente. Praise the Lord. Alabado sea Dios. We have been saved completely. Hemos sido salvados completamente. Now, if it says it's to God's extreme. Si es al extremo para Dios. Can you imagine how saved you are? Uh, Se puede imaginar en, quién, en cuánto uh, somos salvos. You and I should rejoice in our salvation. Debemos de regocijar, regocijarnos de esto. God has made us complete in him, the Bible says. Dios nos ha hecho completo en él. And in the days that we are living in. En los días en que en cual estamos viviendo. Our complete trust and hope must be found in him. Nuestra completamente confianza uh, debemos de hallar en él. We shouldn't allow ourselves to be distracted with all the things that are going on in the world. No debemos de uh, dejar que todo lo que está pasando alrededor nos um, distraiga. Distraiga. Okay. You know, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be informed. 
No quiero decir que no es importante tener información. But what I'm saying is that all those things shouldn't be a distraction in regards to who we are in Christ Jesus. Pero estas cosas no deben de quitar la verdad de quienes somos en Cristo. We have a guarantee of salvation in Christ. Tenemos esa garantía de salvación en Cristo. We are washed in his blood. Lavados en la sangre. We are children of the living God. Hijos del Dios viviente. You and I are on the winning side. Estamos al lado que va a ganar. We have been saved to the uttermost. Salvados al máximo. And we have a high priest that ever lives to make intercession for us. Y tenemos un sacerdote que está orando y In, uh, por nosotros. What does that mean, Pastor? Is Jesus up there doing priestly rituals on our behalf? ¿Qué quieres decir, Pastor? ¿Estás diciendo que Jesús está en el, cien, el cielo haciendo lo que los uh, sacerdotes hacían en dar sacrificios? No, Jesus isn't up there doing that kind of work. No, Jesús no está haciendo ese tipo de trabajo. Look at the first part of verse 27. Miren conmigo verso 27. It says, unlike those high priests, he does not need to offer daily sacrifices. Que no tiene necesidad cada día como aquellos sumos sacerdotes de ofrecer primeros sacrificios. Back then, the Old Testament priests offered sacrifices for their own sins and then for the sins of the people. En ese tiempo leemos que los sacerdotes hacían sacrificios, sacrificios por ellos mismos y luego sacrificios por la gente. But the last part of verse 27 shows what he did do and it says, he did this once for all when he offered up himself. Dice, porque esto lo hizo una vez para siempre cuando se ofreció a sí mismo. When Jesus offered up himself on the cross for you and me. Cuando Jesús se ofreció a él mismo en la cruz del Calvario. It was done once and it was done once for all. Lo hizo una vez y para siempre. It was done once for all in the sense of once for all people if they will believe in him. Lo hizo una vez por todos los que van a creer en él. But it also means once for all, meaning all of our sin. Y también quiere decir que lo hizo una vez por todos nuestros pecados. For you see in verse 26, it shows that he was holy, el innocent, undefiled, separate from sinners and higher than the heavens. Verso 26 dice que él era santo, inocente, sin mancha, apartado de los pecadores, encumbrado por encima de los cielos. A perfect high priest. Un sacerdote perfecto. He did that sacrifice once for all. Lo hizo una vez para siempre. That's why the scripture says he's seated. Y por eso la escritura dice que Jesús está sentado. He seated down in heaven at the right hand of the Father. Está sentado a la diestra de su Padre. Because the work has been done. Porque cumplió, cumplió el trabajo. So then what does it mean he's interceding for us then? Entonces, pastor, ¿qué quieres decir que él está haciendo intercesión para nosotros? Jesus has retained the scars in his hands and on his side and on his feet. Jesús tiene los... Um, the sc scars. Uh -huh. Okay. Escatrices. Cicatrices. En sus manos, en sus pies, uh, cuando se crucificó. Think about it. Piénsalo. The scripture says when Jesus returns... La escritura dice que cuando Jesús regrese, when he comes to Israel in the second coming, cuando él viene a Israel en su segunda venida, the Jews that have called out to him for help, los judíos que han clamado por su ayuda, the scripture says they will look upon him whom they pierced. Van a mirarlo a quien uh, crucificaron. For all time and eternity, Jesus retains those scars. Y por la eternidad, Jesús tiene estas um, marcas en su cuerpo. I'm not sure how to say it. <laughs> say it again. Cicatrices. Cicatrices en sus we're manos here, we're, y pies. We're here learning too, amen? <laughs> 
Anyways, when God the Father looks to his right hand side and he sees his son. Y cuando Dios mira a su hijo. And he sees those scars. Y él mira a los cicatrices. He will remember forever and forever the price that was paid for your and my salvation. Él siempre se va a um, acordar del precio que ha Pagado Jesús por nuestros pecados. His presence there is intercession. Y la presencia de Cristo está allí para hacer, para interceder por nosotros. And because of that, we can understand we have been saved to the uttermost. Y podemos entender que hemos sido salvados al máximo. We have been saved completely. Salvados completamente. There is nothing more that needs to be done. No hay nada más que se tiene que cumplir. We don't have to fast and pray until we're skin and bone. No tenemos que ayunar y uh, orar hasta que solamente somos huesos. It's simply believing and accepting what he's already done for us through the finished work of Calvary. Simplemente es creer y recibir lo que él ha hecho en la cruz por nosotros. And when we believe in it and we accept it, we can understand how complete we are in Christ. Y cuando creemos y lo recibimos, vamos a entender uh, cuántos somos completos en Cristo. We can rejoice in y, our salvation. Y podemos tener alegría de nuestra salvación. Amen. Amen. You know, the world needs to see a living faith among God's people. El mundo alrededor tiene que ver nuestra fe viviendo en nuestra vida. The days are getting darker. Los días se están poniendo más oscuros. But our relationship with God should burn so brightly that the people out there are drawn to the light. Pero nuestra vida debe de brillar más para que la gente pueda ver um, Nuestra vida. That our relationship with God becomes attractive to the people around us. Y que nuestra relación con Dios puede brillar para um, ayudarles. You know, I remember one time David Wilkerson preached a message, the salvation of our face. <laughs> Yo recuerdo que uh, uh, el hermano David Wilkerson predicó un sermón que se llamaba La salvación de nuestra cara. <laughs> and you know, we need that to happen in our in us, you know that? Y a veces es verdad, necesitamos que esto pasa. Because, you know, in Colorado, it's mandated to wear the mask. <laughs> Porque hayamos que tenemos que usar las máscaras. And so because of that, people only see your eyes anymore. Y ahora to- solamente vemos los ojos. And so I need the salvation of my face. <laughs> y yo necesito que mi cara enseña. I don't want to look like I'm mad all the time. Maybe no me quiero aparecer que estoy enojado. I want people to see Jesus in me. Yo quiero que la gente miren a Jesús en mí. And as we live for Christ. Y en cuanto que viva- vivemos por Cristo. In these last days, we can shine brighter and brighter. Amen. En estos últimos dio- días podemos brillar por él. Let's say a prayer and then we'll take communion together. Vamos a orar y luego ten- uh, vamos a tomar comunión juntos. Lord, I pray that you would help us as your people to understand the length, the breadth, the height, Lord, the true depth of our salvation. That, Lord, we have truly been saved to the uttermost. Lord, when it says uttermost, it means completely, to the fullest extent. Lord, there is nothing more that can be done. You've done it all in Christ. And so I pray that you would help us as your people to fully comprehend the beauty and depth of our salvation. I pray that you'd help us to live out, Lord, our salvation before others, that it would be attractive that people would see in our lives, even when the world seems to be falling apart, that they would see in us the beauty of salvation. Draw us ever close to you. Draw us near, I pray. And I pray that, Lord, as we draw near, you would even bring forth the salvation, Lord God, of our face, that, Lord, it would even change our appearance. Help us to be like Christ in these latter days. Cause the light to shine brightly, we pray. And I pray many in our households, our neighbors, our communities would see Jesus and be drawn to him, especially during the time that we're living. And so we thank you for this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen and amen.